Aloha and welcome to part two of our three-part series on proper treatment methods for controlling little fire ants in Hawaii. In today's program, we take a look at granular baits. But before we do, I'd like to mention that we're not affiliated with any business or product and we're not trying to sell you anything. Any mention of a commercial product is mainly to help the educational content of this program. So about 60 years ago, uh, scientists in the pest control industry or the ant control industry started becoming a little bit concerned about the kind of pesticides people were using back then uh, and how much of it they were using. Uh, and um, they developed another way of dealing with, with uh, ants. Prior to that, the, the way of dealing with an ant colony that you didn't want was to basically was to flood the nest or the colony with some very toxic pesticides. And they were using pesticides like DDT and heptachlor, arsenic, all of these very early pesticides, which we now know are quite dangerous. So about 60 years ago, uh, scientists started looking for different ways of trying to control ants. And they hit upon the idea of using a bait. Now the way a bait works is that it's, it's largely food, it's ant food. And mixed in with that ant food is a very, very small amount of poison. But it's enough to get the job done. And the idea is that uh, ants tend to forage around looking for any sources of food. And once they find it, they'll gather that food and bring it back to the nest and share it with the other workers and with the queen and with the brood. You want to make sure to broadcast your bait throughout your yard, on the ground as well as up into the trees, because the ants are living on both the ground as well as the trees. Treating the ground using something like a seed spreader will give you an even distribution, and pacing your yard in a grid pattern will give you uh, good coverage. Okay, the experts say broadcasting the bait for maximum coverage is best. But I certainly can see why people would choose a more targeted approach. If you see the ants in one area, why not just concentrate the bait in that area instead of scattering it all over the place? And some people might even use bait stations for a more concentrated and targeted approach. At least in the case of little fire ants, bait stations are actually less effective. So we get a lot of questions about bait stations and you may have seen bait stations around as a treatment option. Um, it's, they, it's basically a, a container that you put bait in and then it's protected from rain and from animals. And um, they can look like a variety of different things. Um, there's a bait station that Amdro sells that looks like this and it's basically just got a little bit of bait inside and the ants can get into this and it's pretty protected. Um, the problem with bait stations is that it's thinking about the problem on a human scale rather than an ant scale and Little fire ants are really small and they live in all nooks and crannies in your yard and there could be up to 80 million ants on an acre of property and that is approximately 200,000 queens and so if you're trying to get every queen out there, if you're trying to get your foragers to bring the poison or the tango back to all of the queens, you need to have a very fine spread and if you put bait stations out, you're going to get a patchy treatment. Even if you put out hundreds in your yard, it's still going to be a patchy treatment. The second baiting basic would be to treat on a dry day. I know that may be challenging living on the big island, 
but all we need is a four to six hour window of time. With the broadcast application, it gives the ants plenty of opportunity to quickly find your bait and then take it back to the queen. Okay, hold everything. If baits need to be applied on a dry day, I can certainly see why some folks would want the shelter of a bait station to keep the bait out of the rain. Part of the logic behind people using bait stations is that it'll stay out in your yard for a longer period of time, but actually once the ants get to the bait and take it back and have a die off, um, the survivors will actually figure out that that's bad and they won't want to go back to that same source of food. They're really clever. And so having the bait out there for a long time is actually not what's important. What's more important is having a fine spread so that wherever the ants are, they only have to walk a couple feet at most to get to it. And it only takes a little bit of poison and it only takes a day for them to get to it. Okay, I know some people have been taking granular baits and mixing it with peanut butter. And I can certainly understand why they do that. I notice LFA love peanut butter. So why not make the bait more appealing by adding it in? It turns out that's not a good idea. Another thing that we hear from people is that they mix Amdro with peanut butter. And that's not a good use of the product because they will the ants will just go to the peanut butter and eat the peanut butter and they're not going to get the chemical in the amdro. The other thing about that is that it's not technically a legal use by the label because amdro and other granular baits are formulated to be used as is and are not meant to be mixed with other ingredients. At this point I'd like to mention that there are products that can be mixed into a bait matrix that you make yourself and we'll talk about that in part three. For now remember the granular baits that are already made to be attractive to ants should not be mixed with other food like peanut butter. The third baiting basic is to retreat every four to six weeks for a one year period and then reassess your situation. Because little fire ants are so invasive and there are so many of them, treating one time is not a silver bullet solution. You have an army of ants that is going to eat your bait, so you see a large decline in the ants uh, at first, but it's inevitable that over time there are going to be some that have survived and their population will rebound. But really maintenance and follow through is your best bet. With that maintenance and follow through, you get a gradual stair-step decline over time. And that gets you closer to managing your little fire ants. After you've treated your yard for a one year period, it's important to reassess your situation. You can do that quickly and easily by doing a survey. All you need is some chopsticks, coffee stir sticks, any kind of wooden sticks will do. We spray paint them orange to make them easier to find. Put a thin layer of creamy peanut butter on the stick. That acts as a lure for the little fire ants. And you're going to place those sticks in shady, moist areas, uh, at the base of trees and leaf litter, at the crotch of a tree or where the frond meets the stalk of a banana. These are likely habitats where little fire ants will be. Collect your sticks 45 minutes to one hour later and put them in a Ziploc bag. Put them in the freezer for 24 hours to kill them and then you can submit your samples to the Hawaii Ant Lab for identification. If you do find that you're still detecting little fire ants, continue your treatments and don't give up hope. Review of part two, common errors, using bait stations, except in certain situations, as opposed to broadcasting the bait over a greater area. Number two, mixing peanut butter or other food with a granular bait. Number three, treating only one time or only when you see the ants as opposed to using a long-term treatment schedule. Best practices. Number one, using ant bait 
and broadcasting it throughout your property on the ground and in the trees. Number two, applying bait on a day where there are at least four to six hours of dry weather. Number three, use bait and continue to treat every four to six weeks over a one year period. Number four, survey for LFA after the treatment period to reassess your situation. Again, I want to point out that this series is just an overview of common errors and best practices. There are more detailed videos available on the Hawaii Ant Lab website and on my YouTube channel, and I encourage you to refer to these for more information. This concludes part two. Please join me for part three. We'll take a look at the Hawaii Ant Lab gel bait and how you can treat in shrubs and trees for little fire ants. Aloha. Ahoy ho. For links to more detailed videos and tutorials, visit the Hawaii Ant Lab website at littlefireants.com or check out my YouTube channel. The best way to do that is to do an internet search under my name, John Keone Fujitani, and my YouTube channel should come up in the results.